गुड इवनिंग सर इज लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग टू द लेक्चर नो प्रॉब्लम विल वेट अनदर फ्यू मिनिट्स uh may i request uh, doctor are you asking to wait <coughs> yes sir uh, i request doctor ashok sardewa sir vice president of ispe to start the event formally yes please uh -huh. Yes, so i was not getting unmuted on this device now i got it uh, a very good afternoon to all of you just one sir let me start my video i hope i am visible so you are visible yes, sir yeah <laughs> a very warm welcome to all the dignitary dignitaries here on the stage it's a matter of great pride and pleasure and we are fortunate enough that we are now organizing the 49th event of ispel india and hardly we are two or three lectures away from completing a full threshold of one year and will be completing 52 weeks for this i spell has turned the pen acad pandemic period to pan academic era and facilitate to elevate has been the motto of this i spell and it has organized wonderful events i was interested upon the the responsibility of being an event coordinator in the month of april and the second time in the month of august this is my third event in the month of august as coordinator event coordinator the first sunday the 8th of august we had a wonderful event and the keynote speaker was dr sudhir hajela from lucknow and the chairperson was puva ma madam from bengaluru the second one which instead of sunday we organized it on monday 16th of august and dr jirol kapchek from university of toronto scarborough canada he was with us and that was a session full of live interaction after he spoke in both the events we see that there was a huge number of audience connected with the zoom and with the youtube as well and that brought a great success to our program today again this is the third event of this month august under my event coordinatorship and today we are lucky to have the keynote speaker from mumbai panvel mumbai dr rajesh shevle who is a great academician as a great scholar and he is very good at comparing and conduction of the big big international seminars i have often seen him conducting international conferences on the dais and i appreciate his the way he conducts and the very the style that he has we have the chairperson dr manisha sharma pande from indore who is a full fledged professor at mata jijabai government girls pg college master of ceremonies today is dr tushar yadav a very young assistant professor a very young professor very aspiring and very promising young man who did his doctorate a uh, few years ago from devi ahilya university and he was selected and through public service commission and he became an assistant professor and he is serving presently 
in Government PG College, Khargon, which is a close by area from Indore. So Dr. Tushar has been a very promising, very young, very intelligent, and very diligent student. And he was associated with many of our endeavors since long. He happened to work in my major project as well. And he worked under my supervision. And he's doing very well in his field in the world of academia. He has written a number of research papers also. After this, I hand over the entire responsibility of this session to Dr. Tushar Jadav, who is now the Master of Ceremonies. He will facilitate the whole event in the entire session. I welcome you all and I welcome all the participants today. The topic is very interesting on the soliloquies of Shakespeare. I hope we'll all enjoy it. And I welcome Dr. Yavle on this platform of ISPL India. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your warm introduction. And you are my source of inspiration. Uh, with your due permission, sir, I would like to start. Honorable dignitaries of ISPEL and all the learned scholars who are in this platform, as well as watching us live on YouTube, welcome to 49th Literary Satsang presented by ISPEL. ISPEL, Indian Society for the promotion of English for the promotion of English language and literature. ISPEL endeavors to bring all academician, research scholar under one canopy to foster deep learning and to connect, share, and grow. In the string of events, ISPEL organized 49 Sahitik Satsang on the topic revisiting soliloquies in Shakespearean tragedies. We have with us a resource person and a keynote speaker, Dr. Rajesh Yole. Welcome to you, sir. And before asking you to do the honor, sir, I would just share a short bio note of yours. Dr. Rajesh Vishnu Yole currently holds the position as head of the Department of English Changu Kanat Thakur Arts, Commerce and Science Autonomous College, Panvel. He has 22 years teaching experience in UG and 16 years in PG. He is MA in English, as well as he was awarded PhD from University of Mumbai. His research area was American literature. Now, sir is PhD guide in University of Mumbai. Dr. Rajesh Yole have successfully completed three minor research projects. The title of MRP is Empowerment of Communication Skills in English to Vernacular Medium Learners, funded by University of Mumbai. Another MRP entitled, A Study of Enhancement of Communicative Competence in English for Vernacular Learners, that is funded by University Grant Commission, New Delhi. And the last one, MRP, the topic was the comparative study of Indian and Afghan undergraduate students' challenges in learning English language. He has attended more than 50 workshops, seminar, and conferences at universities, state, national, and international as well. He successfully organized seven workshops at university level. He has been invited, uh, sorry, six seminars at college level, three international conferences, and also organized three UGC sponsored conferences. Dr. Rogers, sir, has published 10 research papers in national and international conferences. He has been in various committees at the University of Mumbai. He also has been a member of syllabus revision committee for UG and PG at the University of Mumbai. The most importantly, Dr. Rajesh sir is four times gold medalist in Avishkar Research Convention at University of Mumbai. He has successfully completed online course on the Othello from prestigious Harvard University. He has given his contribution as chairman of cultural associations and hold a position at various committees as a member at the college. He was contributed as a visiting faculty at various colleges with subjects like communication skills, business communication, law and literature, 
Dr. Rajesh sir has been superintendent of CA examination conducted by ICA and also worked as coordinator for CA foundation and CPT courses at college. Under his supervision, 27 scholars have completed Avishkar research project organized by University of Mumbai. And the last, Sir has been invited as a resource person and chief guest at various training programs, conferences, seminars, and workshops. He got many hats he has done at par in the field of research. Now, Without wasting any more time, I take this proud privilege to welcome Dr. Rajesh Kavle. Sir, over to you and the floor is all yours. Uh, Rajesh, Thank sir. you. Thank you, Dr. Tushar Jado for your uh, elaborate and warm introduction, which were given. Thank you. Now, please uh, give me a few minutes to share my screen, then we'll begin. Definitely, sir. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Your screen is absolutely visible. Thank you. Uh, am I audible to you all clearly? Yes, sir. Audible. Only please make it a full screen. Yes, yes. I'll make just a minute. Yes, now. Okay, fine. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon to everyone um, at the outset. Um, I sincerely thank uh, Dr. Ashok Sachdeva, Professor, Department of English, MG Bay, MG Bay Government Girls PG College Indore, uh, for giving this opportunity. Uh, to share my ideas uh, on the topic called Revisiting Soliloquies in Shakespearean Tragedies. Uh, Professor Ashok Sachadeva happens to be my mentor, a good academic friend of mine, uh, who has also visited uh, my college uh, for one international workshop, uh, a thorough professor of English and a source of inspiration to everyone. So uh, before I begin, uh, I sincerely express my thanks to Dr. Ashok Sachadeva. Then uh, I also uh, thank uh, Dr. Tushar Jado for my very systematic introduction. And uh, uh, with this, uh, I, I'm so happy that uh, this Indian Society for the Promotion of English Language and Literature, I spell India, is doing uh, wonderful and interesting work or a task for the promotion of English across India as well as the globe. And the initiative is uh, to be appreciated and uh, to be uh, recommended in days to come. I, I also uh, welcome all the, all the teachers, all the students, all the research scholars who have joined for today's 49th uh, Saitik Sasang on revisiting cellular in Shakespearean tragedies. So uh, I give hearty welcome and extend warm welcome to everybody. And uh, let's have a, a, a journey back to the 16th century uh, once again, and let us revisit the Bard of Avon once again, though we live in 21st century. So with this uh, brief welcome, it's time to begin uh, my session. And the topic which I have chosen is revisiting soliloquies in Shakespearean tragedies. Now, now look at William Shakespeare. When it comes to Shakespeare, what, what attracts everybody, what admires everybody, what creates an uh, insights, interest, curiosity is the name itself. All right, Bard of Avon, popularly known as one of the greatest and a genius dramatist of England or of English literature. He was three in one. I usually consider him, him as an actor, dramatist, and a sonneteer. So he has an amalgamation or a combination of these three important dimensions in his personality as well as in his identity. Born on 23rd April, 1564 at Stratford on Avon, 
as we know that he belongs to Elizabethan era, Elizabethan dramatist. And what is interesting and fascinating about William Shakespeare is that though he lived in 16th century, during Elizabethan era, whatever he has said, whatever he has written, whatever he has penned down is relevant, is applicable to all the centuries and to all the people who are living in this today's technological and digital world of 21st century. Another interesting facet of William Shakespeare is that he was having the skill and ability of intensive observation of human nature and then unparalleled skill of breathing new life to various sources. As we know that Shakespeare has been often called as a plagiarist. There are cases where Shakespeare has borrowed a lot of sources or a lot of you know, themes for his plays, for his works, for his dramas. And the prime source is Hollinshade's Chronicles of England, Scotland, and Ireland. So though he has borrowed with his genius gift of language with his skill of beautification and the ability to express, he has breathed new life to the material which was available through various sources to all his uh, tragedies, romantic comedies, as well as historical plays, which he has created, which he has written in the realm of English literature. At the same time, what makes Shakespeare forever and ever perpetual and immortal and eternal is his ability and the scale to have reflection of universal truths, which are applicable, which are justifiable to all climes and age. Then another interesting feature of all the works of Shakespeare is that, that is use of blank words is a special quality which we find in all the works of Shakespeare, specifically and particularly the purest tragedy or the, or the tragedies which I need to uh, discuss with you in the realm of the soliloquies and its understanding. So effective use of blank words, especially to enhance the beauty and melody of language. And then look at the appeal which Shakespeare is making to all of us, that is sense of curiosity, and, and everybody is having a desire, everybody having, is having a keen interest that I want to explore more and more. I want to explore further in the plays of Shakespeare, new insights, new horizons, and new ideas to be explored, to be analyzed, and to be appreciated. Then he has also depicted immortal thematic concerns, and then we have a desire for exploration, and he also becomes a a, a dramatist with, with, with awe, with surprise, with inspiration, with wonder. And one interesting and very fascinating uh, thing which I need to communicate on this occasion of this online session on soliloquy is that look at the, uh, the great coincidence which has happened to William Shakespeare, one of the greatest dramatists of England in the realm of English literature. That is, he was born on 23rd April, the day is 23rd, the, all right. And, the, and on the same day, he has passed away, that is 23rd April, 1616. Now look at the contribution, then I will go back to my cellular quiz, which where I need to explore in depth or in detail. Shakespeare's contribution in the development of English literature during Elizabethan age, he has written romantic comedies. We have Merchant of Venice, As You Like It, Midsummer Night's Dream, and many more. Then we have historical plays. Richard II is there, and then many others, like Julius Caesar also. Then we have tragedies. Then we have sonnets, 154 sonnets, which Shakespeare has written. And Shakespeare is inevitable as long as English goes, because we observe that Shakespeare is present in every syllabi, syllabi at school level, syllabi at college level, syllabi at various undergraduate as well as postgraduate program, where we need to have visible as well as invisible presence of William Shakespeare, the Bard of Avon, and one of the most towering personality in the realm of English literature. When it comes to tragedies, the tragedies which are all the time giving a source of inspiration, a strength to all of us are Hamlet, Othello, Macbeth, King Lear, 
and then look at the, uh, the, the, the concept of Shakespearean tragedy. I will not go into the details. We have Aristotelian concept of tragedy. Then we have Shakespearean conception of tragedy. Now, look at the area which I need to explore is called as, is called as the beauty of soliloquies in the Shakespearean tragedies. Now, basically what is soliloquy? As we understand that soliloquy is a dramatic device, a dramatic technique, which is used by the dramatist in order to make the play more and more intensive, more and more effective, more and more successful on the stage. Now, what it is basically, it is an act of talking to oneself by the character or actor on the stage. It is also, so a character comes on the stage and reveals his or her inner feelings, inner thoughts or inner expressions to the audience. It's nothing but soliloquy. Usually soliloquies are quite longer. Now there's a little difference between soliloquy and monologue. All right. So soliloquy is heard by the audience. Audience can tip into the mind of the tragic protagonist, what kind of storm, what kind of tsunami is going on in the mind of the character or an actor who is standing on the stage and expressing his or her own soliloquy and reflecting his or her inner feelings in front of the audience. So basically, this is what we understand, uh, soliloquy as a dramatic device. Now let's revisit soliloquies, which are there in Macbeth. When it, when it, see, it's, it's, it's quite challenging to cover all the soliloquies within a short span of time. I have tried my level best to select the most popular one, the most appealing one, and the most charismatic one, which can be considered as evergreen forever and ever, and which can make us reread re-understand, re-interpret, re-analyze, and re-appreciate what was there in the 16th century, and then continue the tradition or the legacy of appreciating and enjoying the most powerful and the most enjoyable soliloquies which are reflected in his prominent works. So, revisiting soliloquies in Macbeth. All right, I have taken few, I have taken four soliloquies from Macbeth, which I need to analyze in due course of time. And then when it comes to soliloquy, now look at it. So uh, now look at Macbeth as a play, how it begins, how, how it commences. It commences with an atmosphere of thunder, lightning, and it creates wonder. And what is the wonder? Arrival of three weird sisters. What are they saying? Fair is foul and foul is fair. An atmosphere of foul murky atmosphere, foul weather conditions, three weird sisters, waiting, thunder, lightning. Look at the atmosphere. And then we have Macbeth, Macbeth as a general, as a protagonist, as a warrior. And then we have Banco also along with, the, with, with, with Macbeth. And then we have, you know, the battle. And then Macbeth is victorious on the battlefield as a warrior. Macbeth as Thane of Glamis, Macbeth as Thane of Cawdor, and Macbeth as a future king of Scotland. All right. And then we have the prophecies made by the witches. And then look at the cellular view of Macbeth. It is in Act 1, Scene 7. Look at the original cellular queen. Now, what does this cellular queen say? And then why these cellular queens have been? a source of inspiration to all of us. We have plenty of soliloquies. We have soliloquies of Lady Macbeth also. We have soliloquies of Duncan also. We have soliloquies of all these significant and vital characters. Now look at the soliloquies. If it were done, then it's done. Then it were well. It were done quickly if the assassination could trammel up the consequences and catch with his Cersei's success that but this blow might be the be all and the end all here. But here upon this blank and shawl of time, I have purposefully given uh, 
stars there the reason being is that now look at now what what kind of what is communicated by macbeth look at the inner voice of macbeth macbeth has planned to murder duncan and look at the the use of effective use of blank verse on the part of shakespeare and the beauty of thymic pentameter look at the 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 dialogue but here upon this bank can show of chai you have know, unstressed stressed unstressed stressed and the melody continues the musicality continues and the and the glory of shakespearean language continues through the soliloquies well jump the light come but in this case we still our judgment here that we teach bloody instructions which being taught return to play the inventor this even handed justice commands ingredients of a poison chalice so only is here in double trust who is here in the double trust arrival of arrival of duncan in the palace of macbeth at inverness he is in double trust first as i am as his kinsman and and his subject strong both against the deed then as his host who should against his murderer shut the door not bear the knife myself besides this duncan had bone his faculties so meek had been so clear in his great office that is virtues now here macbeth is see that look at the the king has arrived in my house at inverness in my palace he is a guest and being a host it's my it's my prime responsibility moral duty that i i should take care of him i should take care of him but now i must murder him that his virtues will plead like angels trumpet tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off and pity like a naked new born babe striding the blast or heavens cherubim forest upon this lightless courier is of the air shall blow the horrid deed in every eye to break the sides of my ancient but only vaulting ambition which overlaps itself and falls on the other so the entire soliloquy is about uh, over ambition halting ambition of macbeth and his halting amb- ambition has been equally and strongly supported and encouraged by lady macbeth that's why there are critics who consider lady macbeth as a fourth witch so this is uh, the first soliloquy which i would like which i had uh, shared with you the second soliloquy is there in act 2 it is related to macbeth's dagger now macbeth has decided you know he has he has made up his mind to murder king duncan when duncan is fast asleep in his chamber in the palace at inverness now look at the second soliloquy is this a dagger which i see before me the handle towards my hand come let me clutch thee i have the knot and yet i see thee still art thou not fatal vision sensible to feeling as to sight or art thou but a dagger of the mind of false creation again we can have the fantastic use of blank words a dagger of the mind a false creation five ambics pentameter proceeding from the heat oppressed brain i see thee yet in form as palpable as this which now i draw all right the dagger seen thou marshalled me the way that i was going and such an instrument 
I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of our other senses. Or else, were it all the rest, I see this still. And on the blade and dungeon God's blood, which was not so before, there is no such a thing. It is the bloody business which informs this very stone parade of my very badge. And take the present horror from the time. Again, blank words. And check the parade in half or from the time, which now suits with it, while a thread lives. Words to the bee, to the heat of dibs, to cold bread gears. Tring, tring of bell rings. I go, and it's done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it's a nail that summons thee to heaven or to hell. So, again, uh, where you know Macbeth is wants to kill Duncan, and then we have this powerful soliloquy, which has which is coming out through the mind of Macbeth on the stage. And then again, we have one more soliloquy, which is coming uh, in the middle of the play where Macbeth has proved himself as a tyrant. Macbeth has achieved the throne of Scotland, all right, by foul means. That's why what the witches were saying at the opening of the Macbeth, fair is foul and foul is fair. The song continues. Now look at this soliloquy of Macbeth as a ruthless tyrant. And in this soliloquy, Macbeth has planned to kill Lady Macduff and her innocent children. Look at the soliloquy, Chai. Thou anticipates my dread exploits. The flighty purpose never is so ortic, unless the deed go with it from this moment. The very first lings of my heart shall be, the first lings of my hand, and even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff, I will surprise. So castle of Mac Macduff is, you know, expressing his evil design, the monstrosity of his mind and heart to kill Lady Macduff and her kids. The castle of Macduff, I will surprise. Seize upon five. Due to the age or the sword, his wife. His ways in all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. No boasting like a fool. This deed. I will do it before this purpose cool. And the last one from Macbeth, which I need, which I have covered, that is, that is an act for you. And this is also one of the most celebrated soliloquy in Macbeth. And uh, it happens or it is uttered by Macbeth after the death of Lady Macbeth. And in this particular soliloquy, Macbeth is revealing his inner feelings, his anguish, his sorrow, his, his devastation, and his pathetic condition. And then this soliloquy uh, facilitates in, 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 the, in the past, in the present and future. Look at this, look at how it goes. Macbeth soliloquy, tomorrow, in tomorrow, in tomorrow, creeps in this petty pace from day to day. To the last syllable of recorded time, he talks about time, and all our yesterdays are lighted fools. 
the way you should us see that out out brief candle and then what he talks about is you know this 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 soliloquy is often quoted life is but a walking shadow a poor player it struts frets is all upon the stage again you have use a blank meet again we have very strategic very effective application of uh, blank words that struts and frets is all upon the stage and then is heard no more is a chair told by need full of sound and fury signify nothing now look at uh, the the sorrow and then you know many times uh, we have the idea that what is there in our life signifying nothing gloominess melancholy of macbeth then uh, the second tragedy which i have selected uh, to how Uh, an interaction with you is uh, taken is taken from Othello, and Othello is again very powerful play, which have a lot of adaptations later on in the form of movies and all that. We have Omkara as the best example. So, soliloquy of Iago. All right, Iago is an utter villain. Act one, scene one. Now, what what are the plans of Iago? and how he is executing his evil designs all right on the stage and he communicates it to the audience i follow him to so my turn upon him oh sir content you i follow him to so my turn upon him we cannot all be masters not all masters cannot be truly followed you shall mark many a duty is and a need crooking name that doting on his own obsequious bondage wears out his time much like his master's ass or not but provender and when he's old cashier where i way either more i would not be iago in following him i follow but myself yeah go so that i follow myself i will not follow what athelo says but appearance is deceptive i will make a show which is present everywhere in 21st century also heaven is my judge not i for law when duty but seeming so for my peculiar end for when my outward action that demonstrate the need to act and figure of my heart the main extern it's not long yet the child will wear my heart upon my sleeve for dolls to pack it and very important one what he says and this is again quoted frequently that is oh, i am not what i am then soliloquy of athelo act 3 scene 3 it is all related to jealousy things thou i would make a life of jealousy things thou i'd make a lie, lie of jealousy to follow still the changes of the moon with fresh suspicions you know to be once in jail is wants to be resolved exchange to me for a goat when i shall turn the business of my soul where virtue is these are more virtues now from my own weak merits will i draw the smallest fear a doubt of a revolt for she she dies to choose for she had eyes and chose me no iago again use a blank words as you see before i doubt when i doubt prove and on the proof there is no more 
interpret this away at once with love or jealousy. And then uh, another one which is so powerful that is uh, Athelo's soliloquy uh, act for you and it is murdering scene. And this murder is murdering scene and the soliloquy of Athelo. Athelo carries candle in his hand. Desdemona is sleeping in her room. Athelo has decided to take revenge on Desdemona because of her relationship with Michael Cascio. All right. And uh, I, I, I can't tell you the entire thing. Now it's, it's a murder scene. Athelo carries a candle in his hand. It's midnight. Athelo enters. And then look at the dialogue. Look at the soliloquy of Athelo before killing Desdemona, before murdering Desdemona, or before strangulating Desdemona. Here it goes. It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Look at the anguish. There is a reason, there is a cause to kill Desdemona. It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you. You chase stars. It is the cause. Yet I will not shed her blood. Look at the infinite love of Athelo for his demon. He said that I must take revenge. I must kill Desdemona, but I should not shed a single drop of blood from the body of Desdemona. It's the cause. Yet I will not shed her blood. No scar, that white skin of hers, then snow. Use a pentameter and blank words again. And smooth as a monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she will betray more men. She must die. There is a cause. And then he's carrying, I told you, he's carrying the candle. Put out the light. And then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again Thy formal light restore. Should I repaint me? But once put out thy light, thou cunning spatin of excelling nature, I know not. Where is the Promethean heat that, that can thy light relieve? When I have plucked the rose, I can't give it vital growth again. It must needs wither. I'll smell it on the tree. Now, as we know that in this soliloquy, before murdering Desdemona, Athelo kisses Desdemona, and look what he says. Oh, balmy breath. That does almost persuade. Justice to break a soul. One more, one more. Be thus, when thou art dead, and I will kill thee, and love thee after. One more. And this is the last. So sweet was never so fatal. I must weep. He's weeping because he has to murder his demona. This, this soliloquy is also considered as a celebrated one, very popular one. Now, I would like to move on to King Lear, King of Great Britain, divided the kingdom uh, between his two daughters. And again, he believed in flattery, made the you know, error, uh, Hamartia of King Lear. And then uh, look at uh, King Lear's soliloquy uh, when he goes mad on the heat. Or reason, not the need. 
of versus beggars. The reason not the need of versus beggars are in the forest things of fears. I love not nature more than nature needs. Again here, blank words. Allow, not nature, more than nature needs. Man's life is cheap. Man's life is cheap as this. Now I can lead it. If only to go warm or gorgeous. Why? Nature needs not. What thou gorgeous wears, wearest, we scarcely keeps the warm, but for true need. You heavens give me that patience, patience I need. You see, me here, you guards, a poor old man. is full of grief as age, wretched in both. If it be you that stir this daughter's heart against their father, fool me, not so much. To bear it tame, touch me with noble anger. And let not women's weapons, what drops, stain my man chicks. No, you unnatural hags. I will have such a vain revenges on both. Let all the world shall I will do such things. What they are at, I know not, but they shall be. The terrors of the earth, you think? No, I will not weep. I have full cause of weeping. Look at the anguish, misery of King Lear when he is on the heat, on the verge of madness because of the ingratitude and the injustice meted out to him by Reagan and Gondry. I have full cause of weeping. But this heart shall break into hundred thousand flaws. All air and be, oh fool, I shall go mad. And here we have the, you know, King Lear and the soliloquy. I shall go mad, exclamatory. Look at the real madness of King Lear. It's not like Edgar in that particular play. And then, the last play which I have <clears throat> selected uh, is a tragedy again. That is Hamlet, Hamlet Salilaku. Now, as we know that Hamlet is a revenge tragedy, again, uh, Hamlet is a play which create a lot of uh, wonder, thunder, because we have, you know, it, it opens, look, look at the manner in which Hamlet opens, begins, and commences. How it commences? It commences with the most appealing and touching dialogue. And the dialogue is, who is there? Who is there? Now, who is there? What kind of situation it is? It's midnight. Ramparts of Denmark. All right? Now, look at Hamlet soliloquy. And then Hamlet <clears throat> is upset. He is in a terrible and horrible state of melancholy. Now, why this melancholy comes to the mind of Hamlet? Hamlet soliloquy after her mother's hasty, unexpected, shameful and disgraceful marriage. Act 1, scene 2. Now look at the innermost thoughts which have been communicated to the audience through this powerful soliloquy. Fire on it. Oh, fire. It's an unweeded garden. It grows to see things rank and gross in nature. Or just it to merely that it should come to this. Two months dead. Nay. Not so much. Not true. So excellent a thing that was to this. Her parent to his so loving to my mother. 
that you might not be team the wind of heaven. Was it a face to roughly heaven and earth? Must I remember why, choose why she would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown? I what? It fade on. And yet, within a month, let me not think on it. And then what do we have? Macbeth making a generalization which is again often quoted frequently and very judiciously, that is in the soliloquy, it says, frailty thy name is woman. A little month, or are those shoes are old? Hey, thou poor, and then, you know, then here we have the first soliloquy that he, you know, said that frailty thy name is woman. Then Macbeth's second soliloquy, which we could observe and find, that is after the ghost of the dead king, which comes uh, act one, scene five. All right. And then look at the soliloquy of Macbeth. The ghost of the dead king is commanding and demanding that, oh, dearest son, and nearest prince of Denmark, take revenge on Claudius. He has poured poison in my ear, ears, and I did not die because of snake bite, as was communicated or presented in the kingdom. Oh, thou poor ghost. While memory holds us it. In this distracted glow, remember thee? Yeah, from the table of my memory. I'll wipe away all trivial found records. All sorts of books, her forms, her pressure is past. That youth and observation copied there, and thy commandments all alone shall leave. Within the book, in the volume of my brain, and mixed with base matter, yes, I have O oh, most pernicious woman, O oh, most pernicious woman, look at the anguish, look at the misery, O oh, most pernicious woman, O oh, villain, villain, smiling, damn villain, my tables, meet it is, I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least, I'm sure it may it may be so in Denmark. Now, see how still it. Uh, this is how you know he said. Now Macbeth understood through the words of the ghost that Claudius has murdered him, and then you know he said that villain, villain at last in Denmark. Hamlet soliloquy then. Uh, Hamlet is there. Hamlet got an opportunity. And then what is the problem here? The problem is that uh, Claudius, Uncle Claudius, the monstrous uncle who was responsible for usurpation of the throne of Denmark by foul means, by, by committing the crime of killing his own brother by pouring poison in his ears. And then mm, Hamlet wanted to take revenge, arrival of the ghost and all those things. And then now when he has an opportunity, but look at his consciousness, which is not allowing him to kill Uncle Claudius. Why? Because he is praying. Now, here it goes. Act three, scene three. Soliloquy of Hamlet. Now might I do it right. Now he's praying. And now I will do it. And so he goes to heaven. And so am I revenged? That would be scan. A villain kills my father. 
And for and and for that, I, his soul son, do this same villain, Saint Heaven. Oh, this is higher and salary, not revenge. He took my father's grass leaf full of bread, blank words. He took my father the grass leaf full of bread. With all his crimes, broad blown as flush as me. And now, and how is what it stands? Who knows, self heaven? But in our circumstance and course of thought, it's heavy with him. And am I then revenged? So to, to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for his passage. No. Absorb. And know thou a more horrid. Ain't. So, where you know, we have Uncle Pring and the last one, uh, which I have chosen or selected, which is again from Hamlet. And this one is the most uh, celebrated one, often said by the people, even, even common man who had not read Hamlet, not studied Hamlet, not seen Hamlet. He also talks about this to be or not to be. I need this to be or not to be. This soliloquy, these this words of Macbeth are applicable to all the people in 21st century because sooner or later, directly or indirectly, visibly or invisibly, knowingly as well as unknowingly, there are occasions, there are situations, there are circumstances in our life where we are also facing the similar dilemma, similar circumstances, and similar scenario like Hamlet. And the last one from Hamlet, it's, it's quite longer, but I need to give justice to it and uh, communicate it accordingly. To be, to be, or not to be, that's the question. Whether it's nobler in the mind to suffer, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Or to take arms against the sea of troubles. And by opposing and to die to sleep. No more. And by sleep to say we end. The heartache and thousand natural shocks. That flesh is hell to its consummation. Devoutly to be wished to die to sleep. To sleep, a chance to dream, ah, there is the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come. When we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There is the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scones of time? The oppressors wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the laws of delay, the insolvence of office and the spurns. The patient merit of the unworthy text. When he himself might his quietus make. So, and then we know that this to be or not to be could have hundreds and thousands of interpretations and uh, it is accordingly uh, often referred, often uttered, often enunciated, and often articulated on various platforms. Now I'm in the last part of my talk, that is conclusion.
I know. Look at the relevance of all these soliloquies which we observe, which we find in the greatest masterpieces and monumental works of the Bard of Avon, that is William Shakespeare. All right. Now look at look at uh, the the soliloquies of Macbeth, soliloquies of Hamlet, soliloquies of King Lear, soliloquies of Othello, universal, applicable to all the human beings, because the, because the human nature is same, the understanding is same, and the reactions and actions of the people during that particular situation or environment is also same. So, uh, though Shakespeare lived in 16th century during Elizabethan age, whatever he said in those days are still applicable in 21st century. Uh, maybe uh, the ideas which he had communicated through his perpetual and immort immortal masterpieces, journey from 16th century to 21st century. All right. And being a student of Shakespeare, being a follower of Shakespeare, it's our duty to, to unlearn, relearn Shakespeare and explode more and more, which is Shakespeare's works are like the beauty of an ocean unlimited. And we need to examine, we need to reread, we need to revisit, we need to re-understand, reinterpret, and reappreciate this beauty which is present in the soliloquies of William Shakespeare's plays, especially tragedies. And then people all the world, people all over the world are witnessing enchanting beauty of the language of Shakespeare, soliloquies of Shakespeare, and the well classics which he penned down forever and ever, perpetually and eternally. That's why Ben Johnson and you know rightly suitably and aptly said, sweet swan of a wrong. He was not of an age, but for all times. Shakespeare was in the past, is in the present, he will be also in the future. Only generations are coming and going, but his works are shining, ideas are shining, truths are shining. So he is a dramatist, writer, an actor, a sonneteer with posterity, eternity, and immortality. At the same time, this bar of a one is also an epitome of inspiration, exploration, and rapture till eternity. Uh, this is what I would like to convey or incorporate in my online talk entitled Revisiting Soliloquies in Shakespearean Tragedy. Uh, Dr. Tushar, over to you now. If any questions or any, now we please go ahead. Definitely, sir. Definitely, am I audible to you? Yes, sir, you are audible. <clears throat> okay, sir, thank you so much. The session was really, we are enlightened, and thank you for your insights, your wonderful observations. We are very happy to listen. Even in the chat box, there are admirable comments you can see, sir. So uh, thank you for this session, sir. And uh, now the session is welcome for question and answers. Anybody? I'm audible to you. Dr. Rajesh Yole. Yes, sir. Yeah, kindly you, switch on your camera, please. Yes, sir. Just a minute. Huh? Yeah, please. I'm trying. Just give me a few minutes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, one who has joined by the name Sanjay Yadav, may I request you to switch on your camera, please? Sorry, switch off your camera. Yeah, Dr. Rajesh, uh, yeah. there is... Uh, uh, not a question, but indeed, after so many years, I'm listening to a theater person. The way you have presented and the way you have narrated, the way you have used the pauses, 
the speed, the style, and entire theater was there on the virtual platform. And it's really soothing for the ears to listen to you and to understand the soliloquies of Shakespeare. And moreover, what you said at the last, it's the need of the hour for all the teachers to learn, unlearn, and then relearn how to teach drama in the classroom. Because I always believe drama has immense potential as far as teaching English as a second language is concerned. And being a teacher, the teacher has to be an artist. The teacher has to be an actor. The teacher has to be a musician. The teacher has to be a doctor. The teacher has every profession within himself. And today, you made it absolutely known to all the people, those who are on the platform. Though very few of them are there, but they are going to carry a wonderful thing inside them and let Shakespearean characters come out of us. Let us feel the characters within. The moment you feel the character, the moment you feel Hamlet, Macbeth, King Lear within you, the dialogue delivery of yours will entirely change. And it will really mesmerize the students also. So thank you very much, Dr. Rajesh, for coming on the platform of iSpell and giving such a wonderful talk. I really appreciate and respect the way you presented it. So this is my comment. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm so happy you, because, uh, because you know, teaching Shakespeare is always a challenge. It's not that easy. It's his language, his style. And again, we have to communicate the feeling through a dialogue. Maybe the right. misery, maybe you know the mood, whatever. And that becomes quite challenging even to teachers. We all of us face challenges teaching him. And sometimes students also find it difficult because of the language, the, thou, thine. Right. That also okay. creates uh, challenges, but it's interesting. And we being yes. a teacher... Should being a teacher, we need to take the challenge. And if we are not going to take the challenge to ourselves, then we are not going to communicate it to the students. Then when the students are going to take the challenge, so what you are doing is absolutely fantastic. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. You, uh, sir. you have been talking with uh, Dr. Ghansham Agrawal, sir. As an sorry, it's not, a, this... it's, not, it's not Dr. Ghansham Agrawal. It's just G.A. Ghansham. G.A. Ghansham, sorry, sir. My mistake. No, no He's problem. an efficient leader of this literary activities. He has got the capacity to transform dreams into reality. Uh, the sir is the general secretary and founder of iSpell. I welcome you, sir. And thank you uh, for your question and for your deliberation. Anybody who can ask questions, the questions are welcome. Yes, sir. I like to ask one question, sir. Definitely, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, Naveen, sir. Naveen, sir. Yeah, yeah. At the outset, uh, let me congratulate the coordinator, uh, Dr. Professor Ashok Sajdevaji. Definitely. And I think uh, without him, it won't be possible by any means. And I would like to thank also, also today's you know, speaker, Dr. Rajesh Yeoleji. It's a wonderful, you know, it's a treat to listen to him, to be very honest. Shakespeare and Hamlet and soliloquies are always, you know, something which uh, entice people across the globe. Uh, what I feel, sir, it's not a question. I like to share certain things with you. Please and I hope ahead. that you would, you would also throw some more light on it. Yes, yes please uh, go solilo ahead. Soliloquies are something which are related to the, you know, deep, deep uh, you know, working of human psyche or human Very mind. Good. You know, human mind is involved there. So, sir, I would like to know from your end that uh, in developing a character's role like Hamlet, what is the role of psycho uh, psychology? What is the role of psychology um, in the back of soliloquies? You know, soliloquies, one after one, they come uh, in the, you know, they appear in the uh, drama and they reflect the mood, the attitude, the behavior of Hamlet. So, what, uh, what are your, you know, opinions about the uh, psychological impact of, psycho of uh, soliloquies or, or even it may be vice versa. Okay. So what will be your uh, take on this particular notes? 
Uh, as sir, as you rightly pointed out, soliloquies are nothing but the revelation of inner workings. Psyche is revealed, inner feelings are revealed, and when the character is playing, for example, one particular character is playing the role of Hamlet, or let us say, for example, somebody is playing the role of uh, Othello, and Othello wants to murder Desdemona. Look at that that soliloquy. So that that anguish should come from within. So psychology is. Uh, directly or indirectly reflected in uh, this soliloquy because those are intertwined with each other psychological element is there otherwise you know the utterance and the feelings communicated through soliloquy will not match so the the character or the actor should have that insight into the psychological elements and the feelings which are communicated through the dialogue or through the that particular dialogue delivery and it should go hand in hand so that it becomes effective and uh, impressive and uh, impactful in that particular manner or in that particular course of action thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you sir uh, next madam was raising hand i think anybody Am I audible, sir? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Yes, now you are audible, ma'am. You can ask. Yes, a very warm good evening uh, to you, all the dignitaries present here, uh, sir. Uh, I got a, a very valuable uh, opportunity uh, that I could listen to you and you explain soliloquies. and uh, sol soliloquies as a psychoanalysis of a person and uh, you uh, surely you explained it uh, quite well and so i would like to uh, ask sir one thing that uh, ha once hamlet says that time is out of joint o curse is fight i am born to set it right Yes. This is a line which Hamlet says in uh, in the drama. Okay. So, sir, uh, today, since two thousand nineteen, we have been living under pandemic. So, uh, how you do right. you interpret those lines in present context? Okay. Now look at we all are uh, experiencing this pandemic. Again, it's to be or not to be. Yes or no? some people are fighting with the pandemic with the courage and the spirit uh, now let us consider somebody who is infected by covid he is in the hospital when he is on when he is somebody is in icu in the hospital in this pandemic when you know these uh, those uh, uh, all beeps are happening uh, in that particular room person momentarily thinks about my life is to be or not to be on today i am alive i don't know what will happen next moment i don't know what will happen even tomorrow also so it it's 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 a it's a universal phenomenon <laughs> even in pandemic also we do have this to be or not to be or you know as you said that time joint you know it's it's true some some people are taking it with the spirit now look at wearing the mask also no now it's pandemic period wearing the mask one mind says wear the mask another man says no i am a don on the earth and a tiger on the road why should i wear the mask so look at this this kind of things which are uh, coming in our mind one side to be another side not to be it's it's everywhere in in all walks of life we are witnessing this uh, environment this uh, scenario or the circumstances of this uh, to be or not to be Yeah, yes, with your kind permission, Doctor Rake Rajesh, I would like to add, like uh, pandemic. Uh, the question was like that, right? So during pandemic, most of the people were looking down because of the pandemic, and I still looked up during the pandemic, and that's why we have reached from pandemic to pan academic. So I still is the brainchild of pandemic, and this is the forty ninth. sunday sahityak satsang of icepel non stop sahityak satsang and no association no society no forum in the country 
has done this on every Sunday continuously without a break. So this is the essence of pandemic, the way you look at it. That's what we call perception. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Is there any question? Okay, with due permission, we are now extremely privileged to have the chairperson of today's 49th series of literary satsang of Esper, Dr. Manisha Sharma Pandey. What I know about Madam, she has very soft nature and erudite scholar at the same time. She is the gem of literature prior to invite. I just present a short bio of Madam. Madam is awarded a PhD degree on the novels of Anita Desa and Shashi Deshpande from Devi University in Dor. She got second merit position in MA at Rani Durgavati Vishwavidyalaya Jabalpur. She, she has BA at Rani Durgavati and secured five fifth merit position in university. She topped in CBSE Central School and got highest marks in geography. I received trophy from Chairman CBSE. Madam is holding a position of Professor of English in Mata Jijabai Government Girls College in the world. Madam has attended the presented papers in many national and international conferences and workshop. She was coordinator of a UGC sponsored national conference at her college. She organized international conference on prominent Irish writer. She also participated in international conference organized by IUAES in Manchester, UK. She has published many research paper articles in recognized journals, books and anthologies. She is supervisor. She is PhD supervisor in KVV, the Vela University in Dor. She is also the examiner in other universities. Under she guided many dissertation in MA and MPhil courses. Madam is a member of Shaw Corner Delhi India. She is a member of Literary Forum in Dor. She also is a member of Rotary Club of Greater in Dor and she a uh, member of IUAES, UNESCO. Madam is a subject expert in the interview board of Navoda Vidyalay, Sika and other schools. It goes without saying that she has been providing her valuable service to Aaron of Literature. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. Manisha, Madam. Over to you, Madam. Am I audible to share? Yes, yes, ma'am. You are audible, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, good evening, uh, the founder, president, Dr. D.A. Ghansham, I spell, the keynote speaker today, Dr. Yavle, event coordinator and vice president, I spell, Dr. Ashok Sajdeva, and uh, the audience, all the students. What a wonderful intellectual deliberation by Dr. Yavle. The choice of the topic, Revisiting soliloquies in Shakespearean tragedies is very interesting and relevant. Shakespeare's works are timeless and their popularity remains unabated. The lines that Shakespeare wrote for Cleopatra in Antony and Cleopatra, age cannot wither her, nor custom stale her infinite variety, is so apt for the literary creations of the bard even today. The soliloquies have played a very important role in the shaping of the eternal influence of the characters such as Hamlet, Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, King Lear, Romeo, Portia, Shylock, and so many. The minute one sees an indecisive overthinker, the image of Hamlet is invoked, a lady politician 
who will go to any extent for fulfilling her selfish motives is compared to lady macbeth just as in our epics and in our culture bhishma's name invokes a strong determination or yudhishthira symbolizes the virtue of truth the universal appeal of shakespearean plays is so strong that the time and place in which they are read published performed produced you know they seem to coincide with that time the disgrace of a public reader is visualized as a downfall as a downfall of shakespearean proportions lady macbeth's exclamation in the sleep walking scene out damn the spot is now used to describe stain removers and acne medicine marjorie gorber in shakespeare and modern culture comments i quote an advertisement for heart candy cosmetics extends the literary illusion offering not only the out damn spot concealer pencil to cover up blemishes but also a coordinated line of makeup called macbear and mac buff uncoat dr yevle uh, rightly said that soliloquy is a dramatic device which makes a play very successful and you know when an uh, an actor talks to himself the inner landscape of the actor becomes very clear i do agree with dr yevle that it is difficult to select the soliloquies but he has so methodically chosen all the representative crucial soliloquies and analyzed them in a very detailed manner the blank words comes alive in these soliloquies and just as when he says life when he quotes from macbeth life is but a walking shadow a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more it's a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing the existential dilemma faced by men since eternity comes alive dr yevle talked selected the soliloquies of iago and othello in the play othello othello carries a candle in midnight and before strangulating desdemona he logically explains himself Othello symbolizes the lover who cannot control his jealousy. King Lear's Hamartia's flattery, and he suffers because of that. Hamlet is a tragedy, and Hamlet is a case that has been taken for psychological studies since time immemorial. And the more we study Hamlet, the more we continue to analyze him. The process goes on. for continuous analysis and hamlet is a revenge play as dr yavle says but then it becomes a piece of psychological studies whether he says to be or not to be that is the question and that immediately highlights the existential dilemma faced by the modern man and the dilemma faced by mankind in general since eternity so these are the plays which are uh, you see a uh, cycle is uh, very deeply intensely psychological and they have an universal appeal they were they were uh, appealing in that time and they appeal us now also dr yavle dr yavle made a captivating presentation of soliloquies in shakespearean tragedies i do agree the voice modulation and the theatrical presentation is wonderful as dr ghansham rightly said drama actually i i always tell my students also drama means to be enacted and not only to be read and dr yevle the way you rendered the soliloquies you know you took us to a wonderful voyage of the shakespearean world and the audience was mesmerized we were all there with you in the shakespearean world and as you said Shakespeare Shakespeare is an ocean unlimited which needs to be perpetually reinterpreted and we can uh, there are so many as you said omkara and so many uh, movie adaptations then even the uh, adaptations in the regional languages and the eternal river goes on and on and just as you quoted ben johnson who said for shakespeare he was not of an age but for all time so 
for your lecture to Dr. Yevle. It will hold its importance for all time and the students and the scholars will be greatly benefited by this lecture. Thank you, Dr. Yevle. And now I take this opportunity to thank Dr. G.A. Ghansham and Dr. Ashok Sajdeva uh, for uh, taking this wonderful literary initiative because you know we continuously listen to the sessions and our knowledge gets enhanced and the students too greatly benefited by it. Thank you all. Over to Tushar. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your beautiful insight and observation, ma'am. Uh, I again welcome question session. Anybody have question or feedback, they are welcome. Tushar, now it's time for uh, distribution of the certificates. We will invite Dr. Gansham Singh, the organizing secretary, and I'll be joining hands with him, and we'll go over for the certificate distribution. It's true okay, that please. soliloquies are the souls of Shakespearean tragedies. If there were not soliloquies, the plays wouldn't have been much charming. And this charm was clearly rendered to us by Dr. Yavle. And Dr. Yavle, it seems to be a theater artist. And I have seen him comparing and conducting the programs at the Mumbai University. For a while, listening to his close friend, Dr. Shivaji Sargar was also here. And he almost attended the lecture of his most dear friend, Dr. Yavle. I wanted to welcome him also on the dais. But I, but I think he seems to have left now. So it was a great privilege that Dr. Shivaji Sargar, on his own accord, joined this forum and attended his close friend's lecture. They are like, yes, sir, I am there. You are there. there. So I welcome Dr. Shivaji Sargar. And I too wanted your lecture, sir, on this platform. But um, And uh, my request is still pending with you since long. So you have to be there with us. And uh, uh, you came to listen to your friend Tanaji here, who is very much here. <laughs> and it was a pleasure. Just I happened to check the list and I saw that you have left, but uh, I'm glad that you are still here. Here is uh, our organizing secretary, Jay, Jay Gansham, and is doing a wonderful <laughs> human's job. And only just, we are two lectures away from the threshold of completing 52 weeks. Once it is 51st and 52 second, I think this I spell has achieved its purpose of facilitate to elevate. Dr. Shivaji Sargar. Uh, Jay Ghansham, sir, can I give uh, uh, one minute, two minutes to Shivaji Sargar to appear before us in order yes, to welcome? By all means. Yes, yes. Dr. Shivaji, sir, will you be with us with your on camera on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yes, Dr. Shivaji, sir, uh, we welcome you to this platform. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, uh, act, act, yes, I uh, thank to you. you as a speaker. It's your greatness that you have joined us to listen to Dr. Yavle. <laughs> so, uh, and sir, do give us time to, uh, as a keynote speaker on this platform at any point of time, whenever you can spare time for us. Hmm? So, so, it's time yes. for certificate distribution. And I request Dr. Shivaji Sargar to speak a few words. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sachdeva, um, for sharing the link of uh, today's uh, session on uh, our university academia. Actually, I, I keep uh, visiting university mm -hmm. academia very often. Uh, but today, as it is uh, Saturday, and I was literally free, so I thought, let me join the session. And luckily, it was... Dr. Rajesh Evelyn's session, who is a very close you know, friend of mine from Mumbai itself. And we are working, to, as you know, we are working for these academic uh, uh, ventures very often uh, on his campus at Panwell College, Sikhetakur College, Panwell, and also my department of English University of Mumbai. So I'm, I must say that uh, this is uh, uh, one of the very impressive sessions which I have recently attended. And... Uh, Dr. Rajesh definitely did a wonderful job by making the people uh, to know how you can teach uh, drama in, a, in, a, in the class. Because today we are doing, we are doing uh, many things online and it's because it has become a little difficult for us to teach literature in the classroom. So yes. this way, 
the way in which he has presented the soliloquies of Shakespeare's definitely uh, it's praiseworthy. And uh, yeah, as, as uh, Dr. J. Uh, Gansham he rightly mentioned, uh, it is it is actually uh, the takeaway for the people who are listening to this particular uh, talk by Dr. Rajesh Shivali. Uh, even I, I, I hope uh, you will be making this uh, talk available on YouTube channel or something yes, like sir. that. So, yes, so, so that definitely a uh, large, num stream, large number of audience can take benefit of it. Yes, sir. sir, it is thank you very much. Stream. Yeah, sir. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sachideva and Dr. Uh, uh, Rajesh Shivali. Yeah. And of course, Dr. Manisha Pandey, uh, also a very good friend of mine from Indore. Uh, I'm, Good evening, I'm Dr. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky enough to uh, to listen to her also. And actually, the way she concluded this wonderful talk, it's really praiseworthy, Dr. Manisha. Congratulations yes. to both the speaker and uh, the chairperson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really congratulate uh, and appreciate the efforts made by uh, ISPIL uh, by bringing on... Uh, various scholars across the globe to share their experiences, their views, their academic uh, uh, interests with the people uh, who are attending these sessions. So uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, making this event uh, available for the lovers of literature. Thank you, Dr. Jiye Gansha. Dr. 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 Uh, thank you, Dr. Sachandeva. A wonderful session, Dr. Evelyn. Yes, sir. For sir, your, your comments on this platform are really meaningful to us. And we are beholden by your presence, and we appreciate to your words of encouragement for all of us. So, sir, next time we would love to hear you here on this platform, sir. Just two minutes, sir. Sir, you had been yes. always a source of inspiration. We Tanajis are always there to be warriors <laughs> and win the academic battles with yeah, yeah. <laughs> your uh, mentorship and blessings. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Yeah, when so you say Tanaji, if you go the <laughs> other way around, it becomes Nataji. So you have a relationship. Yes, right? yes. So that's what Nata and Tana both are interrelated with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are very close friends. Yeah. And yeah. bosom friends. And uh, uh, just a, I mean, a piece of information to Dr. Sarga and all the people, those who are on the platform of iSpill, that all the events of iSpill, which are uh, which we conduct on every Sunday is available on YouTube with the uh, iSpells channel. And this is also being live streamed on YouTube. So all the videos of iSpell are available on the channel of iSpell. Thank you. Definitely, sir. Uh, my student of Kharkon College, they will also subscribe this channel, sir. And they come to know that such type of events are organizing. And we are part of this. We are so lucky. Thank you. Uh, Gansham, sir. Thank you very much. I would request so, Dr. Sajdeva, sir. Uh, uh, please invite Dr. J. Gansham for the ceremony yeah. of... Sir. Yeah, I am there. Right, right, yes. sir. Right, sir. Okay. Yeah, indeed, and it's a pleasure and a... honor. Yeah, pleasure and honor to have the wonderful speaker on the platform of ISPEL, Indian Society for the Promotion of English Language and Literature with uh, Dr. Ashok Sajdeva. Yes, absolutely right. He has stressed his arms to bring Dr. Rajesh Yole. Right. And because of Rajesh okay. Yole, this evening has become a wonderful kind of a dramatic evening with the theatrical uh, analysis and the theater coming into it and presentation with the dialogues, with the dialogue delivery, the pauses and the speed and everything was fantastic because nowadays we cannot see the theaters and this generation is missing the theater. What they could see is the in the metros and even in the smaller cities also, they have the malls. So they have the theaters in the form of uh, the movies, but they do not have the real theater where there is no take. There is only one take and there is no retake at all. So in that way, Rajesh Yole has brought so many things on the platform of iSpell. So this certificate goes to Dr. Rajesh Yole for performing in such a wonderful way. And we do hope to see him contributing on the platform of iSpell in the days and months to come. So, Dr. Rajesh Yole, kindly accept this as a token of appreciation and love from ISPEL. Dr. Yavile, congratulations. <clears throat> Please accept Thank this. You. Yes. Uh, one more thing I, I would like to say. Uh, 
my yes. special thanks to the entire team of ISFEL, uh, especially Professor G. A. Uh, Ganesham, General Secretary of this ISFEL. Uh, then uh, my close friend, Dr. Ashok Sochdeva, for giving me the opportunity to share my views. I'm so happy. Uh, a month ago, he told me over the phone that uh, you need you know, select one topic. And then finally, uh, I said, okay, I can uh, deliver a session on uh, Selilek Bees on Shakespeare. So it's a kind of an opportunity provided to me uh, by Dr. Ashok Sachadeva. Uh, and it was my mission to make it uh, successful because he has put faith and trust in me, uh, given an academic uh, feast, which I should make it memorable, cherishable, and successful. So thanks to all the office bearers of ISPL. And whenever in future you feel that my contribution is needed, I will wholeheartedly and definitely contribute in days to come in the development of ISPL uh, in its course of journey. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh. And what you did is absolutely you have shaken the fear with the help of Shakespeare. So the fear was like the frozen kind of, of fear. So what you did is with the help of your dialogue, you have broken it into pieces. So shake the fear with Shakespeare is the real thing that you have done today. Right. right. <clears throat> this certificate goes to Dr. Manisha Sharma Pandey, who has wonderfully summed up the entire event. And the task of the chairperson is really Herculean task because the chairperson has to sit right from the beginning till end and to listen and to make a note. And then when the turn comes, then the chairperson has to put her remark or his remark. And in that way, Dr. Manisha Sharma has done a wonderful job by bringing various things of Shakespeare onto the platform of ISPIL and then not only complimenting Yale, but also putting forth her own views on Shakespearean <laughs> soliloquies. So this certificate goes to Dr. Manisha Sharma as a token of love and appreciation from ISPIL. Thank you, Dr. Kanchan. Thank you very much. Manisha. Congratulations, man. Thank you, Dr. Sajdeva. And I must say that the duo is doing a great job. As you said, it is not pandemic, it is pan-academic. And uh, the intellectual deliberations are really very, uh, you see, helpful and interesting. And Dr. Yeah. Sajdeva, who's a friend, philosopher and guide, he always keeps on motivating me. And nice to talk to Dr. Sargar also. Uh, I think it will be great if Dr. Sargar joins us more often. Thank you very yeah. much. In India, we had the great Ashoka. And in Icefell, <laughs> we have Dr. Ashoka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a statement. This yes, certificate sir. goes to Dr. Tushar Jadhav. And the month is of Savan and Tushar is there and he has conducted right from the beginning till end and he has uh, taken the ship to its uh, destination. And on the ship, there were so many passengers, those who were sitting and those who were doing their activities. And in the meantime, the uh, keynote speaker was delivering uh, his lecture and the journey was quite comfortable with full of dramatic events. And Dr. Tushar, you have carried it in a very systematic and in a better way and you have become the prospero of uh, this <laughs> tempest. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very uh, much. Congratulations, Tushar. Now your responsibility has increased in terms that you have to work <laughs> actively towards Western MP Forum. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. I Thank you, sir. Yeah. Congratulations, Thank you very sir. much. Thank you very much. Over to Dr. Ashok Sasdeva. Yes, sir. I tender a vote of thanks to all the dignitary and dignitaries here. I'm especially thankful to the keynote speaker, Dr. Rajesh Yavule, that who accepted my request. And my request with Dr. Shivaji Sargar is also pending. Very soon he will join us. But I'm beholden the way he has entered and way, the way he has supported Dr. Yavule and all of us. And I thankful to Dr. Manisha Sharma Pandey, who acted as a chairperson of today's section. And Master of Ceremonies, Dr. Tushar Jadhav, who conducted and compared the program, facilitated. He, he nicely worked as a facilitator and coordinated all the events. And I'm thankful to, and to the EC committee and our general secretary, Dr. J. Ghansham, and president, jo Dr. Jyoti Patel. And I can see another mm -hmm. vice president of ISPEL, Prasanta Chakravarti, is here. And 
the thanks equal thanks go to Pramod Dengle sir for making all these flyers and uh, conducting this uh, seminar on Zoom and also for uh, live streaming. All the credit goes to him. So we have many pillars in ISL. EC committee is, uh, you know, each one is a pillar. And we have Dr. J. Ghansham with us. And we have, uh, under the able, uh, you know, guidance of the president, Dr. Jyoti, <coughs> the ship is moving. Oh, captain, my captain. Hmm? So, uh, <laughs> so and, and to the participants, attendees, and all the dignitaries, academicians, professors, who came to support us, but for them, this program, this session would not have been a successful one. So the first and foremost credit should always go to those who are attending this uh, session, this program, webinar. So my profound and heartfelt thanks to the attendees, those who spare time, and because Saturday is a working day, despite that, and our two programs, last Sunday, fell on Monday. And this Sunday was preponed on Saturday because of the festival. Last time it was Independence Day, and this time today we have Raksha Bandhan tomorrow. Dependence so I wish you all a happy Raksha Bandhan, and it has been a really successful program. It um, it has been we are receiving good feedback and the chat box and from other friends also. And thank you all the guests being with us today. Before you wrap up, Dr. Sasdeva, uh, let me uh, provide a piece of information to all the people, those who are on the platform well, of iSpill, that welcome, next su next Sunday, we are going to have our 50th Sunday Sahityak Satsang. Yes. So 50th, that's the golden jubilee of iSpill. And then in the month of September, the entire month of September is devoted to Indigenous Incredible India. So the theme is Indigenous Incredible India. So we are going to bring the folklores, the folk tales, the dramas, the theater, the in and out of India, everything will be concentrated only and focused only on India. So entire September month will be the anniversary year for iSpell because iSpell started on 5th of September 2020 on Teacher's Day. And right. this 2021 on 5th September, we are also having another film artist, another folklore artist, another folk artist from Chhattisgarh who will start the journey of indigenous incredible India. So making it incredible, the entire success goes to the people, those who are the playback singers of <laughs> iSpell, those who uh, do not come on the platform of iSpell by opening their videos, but they are there as the silent current, the undercurrent is there. And just because of them, iSpell is blooming like anything. Maybe all the time people are taking one name of uh, G.A. Ghansham, but G.A. Ghansham is not the pillar of iSpell. G.A. Ghansham is a very small person and all the capitals, S-P-E-L-L, -L, they are the people, those who are at the back of iSpell. I'm just the small I and all others are the capital S-P-E-L-L. -L. So they spell and I come in the front. And Mr. Pramod Dhengle, who is at the back, he is the unsung hero of iSpell who not only uh, does every activity on Zoom, but he records every activity so that it will be available on uh, YouTube. And he is the one who creates such a wonderful flyers. So we have a very committed, devoted, and disciplined person in the form of uh, Mr. Pramod Dhengle, who never comes on the platform of iSpell. He never shows his face, but he is the face of iSpell. Right. He has immortalized the Thank all you, the lectures. Thank you. <coughs> so yeah. should we come yes, to sir. a successful close now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So I uh, thanks to all with the folded hands for supporting Thank us <laughs> and to the audience and to the keynote speaker and the chairperson. Well, please well, welcome, sir. Host, we have, but are the guests. Hmm? We have yeah. a long way to go together. A lot of <laughs> collaborations to happen hmm? in yeah, days yeah. to come. And academic ventures. Yeah. Thank you. Can we? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Stay Thank you, safe. Sir. Stay healthy.